Hi, my name's Andy. Uh, this is a series of talks about how to write your first ever computer program, your first ever computer game. Uh, we're going to do it on the Raspberry Pi, which is this fantastic little uh, computer, but it's the size of a credit card. Uh, it looks like a circuit board. It's properly, you know, geeky cool. Uh, so for, uh, this is the first lesson. I'm just going to go through what uh, you need. You're going to need to buy a few things to get your Raspberry Pi working. You need to get your Raspberry Pi as well. Uh, by the end of this, you should have your Raspberry Pi starting up and showing stuff on your TV screen. Uh, so let's start off. Let's make it a bit smaller. Um, you can follow along with all this with the blog post you can find on my blog, uh, which I'll link from the uh, YouTube uh, description. Uh, so there's a detailed description of all the steps in there. Uh, but let's start off with what you need. Well, first thing you need is a Raspberry Pi. So let's make it big. So this is what a Raspberry Pi looks like. Um, it looks like a chip, but it's got all the um, components you need. Uh, it's got a CPU on there, uh, uh, quite a good graphics card, and a load of other stuff. Um, so you can get one of these. And where we, where I got mine was from this site. So let's have a look. I got it from RS. Someone bought it for me. I don't know how much they paid, but you can uh, you can get them now for about twenty five pounds. Um, uh, have a look on the uh, on the RS site for that. You're also going to need uh, an SD card. Let's have a look at my one. Well, it looks the same as that. I'll show you just to prove I've got one. So you're going to need an SD card. It looks like that. I coloured mine in green uh, just to make it look a bit cooler. Um, but I bought this exact one uh, for around about ten pounds. Uh, you need one of them. Make sure you get a good one. They're not. Um, I'm not sure exactly which ones work and which ones don't. Uh, with the Pi, but definitely not all of them work. This one worked for me, so uh, it's a slightly more expensive one, but they're not very expensive, are they? Uh, the other thing you're going to need is an HDMI cable. Uh, I got this one. Um, I tried, before I got an HDMI cable, I tried with a composite cable, and things didn't work very well, so um, I hope you've got a TV that supports HDMI. If so, your cable's going to cost you a quid. Um, you're also going to need some kind of um, power lead. This is the same as the power lead that for my HTC Wildfire S phone. Um, uh, that one works as well, um, but I bought another one just so that I could use my Pi when my phone was charging. Uh, this one costs, well, it costs at the moment four quid. Um, uh, seems to work fine. It needs to be five volts, one amp. Um, you're also going to need uh, a keyboard and mouse. Um, this is not the one I bought. I don't know whether it's any good. Uh, but I've got an ordinary keyboard and mouse. It's got to be USB. So what that means is that it's got to have a connector like this on the end of it. Not one of the round ones with a flat edge or anything like that. It's got to have a USB connector. There's my USB keyboard. And look, here's my USB mouse, which also has exactly the same connector on the end. There are two of these connectors in the Raspberry Pi. You plug them in. Where they are is, if you look on your Raspberry Pi, on the end you see these two things, whoops, see those two together, those are your um, USB ports where you plug in a keyboard and mouse. Just above there, that's where you plug in the Ethernet. What else have we got? Uh, this yellow thing is the composite, uh, so you won't use that if you're using HDMI. Uh, the HDMI, oh it's around here, HDMI port is that thing in the middle there. Uh, here's my HDMI cable, by the way. This is what an HDMI cable looks like. Um, there's also the power lead plugs in the end here. You see that? That little one by over here. Um, what else was I going to show you? Oh, yeah. And the slightly tricky thing that had me fooled for a while. The SD card goes on the back. So this is where I've been showing you all the other stuff. On the back... So where the SD card goes in, it just slots in backwards like that. So the shiny bit is facing downwards. That's how you put your SD card in. I'm sure that won't give you as much trouble as it gave me. Okay, so once you've got all that stuff, a few other things you can try. Well, something you can do is you can get hold of an SD card with um, the software you need already on it. You can get that from the Pi Hut. I didn't do that. Um, you don't need to do that, but you could do if you're really scared by this idea. So the software that we are going to put on there is called Raspbian. Um, and uh, uh, what that is, is is derived from the name Debian, but it's for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, basically, it's a type of Linux. If you haven't heard of Linux, then don't worry. It, it won't scare you. It's going to be fine. 
Um, so let's have a look at, here are my instructions, that's what you need to buy, it's going to cost you about 47 quid overall. Uh, and you need to get Raspbian onto your SD card. So um, I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail about how to do that. Um, there are, there's a couple of websites that I've linked from the blog post on it. Basically, you go to the Raspberry Pi page, which is here. Scroll down and have a look where it says Raspbian Wheezy, direct download, download that zip file. And then follow the instructions, which I've also linked from the blog post, uh, telling you how to set it up. There's all kinds of instructions for Windows, several different versions for Windows and for other things like that. Uh, it's all going to be fine, honestly. So once you've put your image on your SD card, and don't forget, by the way, all this stuff is cheap. So if you if you mess it up, even if you break it, it's not that bad. But it's very difficult to break it. If you mess up your SD card, uh, just do it again. All you have to do when you're following the instructions is not wipe your computer. Okay, so be careful about that. Um, but um, that's probably easier to do if you're on Linux. If you're on Linux, then definitely don't wipe your computer, okay? If you're on Windows, maybe it's not so bad. Okay, so once we've got all that stuff, we've plugged all the cables in, in the little holes that I've shown you. Plug it into your TV. Um, uh, when you plug the power in, it turns on. So basically, there's no on-off switch. You just plug the power in and turn it on. Um, and you're going to see some screens that look a bit like this. It's going to boot up. It's going to take a while. You're going to see a lot of white writing. Uh, don't let that worry you or anything. Um, you don't have to understand any of that. Uh, and then the first thing you're going to see is there's going to be a setup page. Um, just ask you a few questions before you get started. Um, I was going to tell you what buttons to press on this page, but actually um, I didn't need to press anything on that page at all. Uh, maybe you won't either. Um, certainly if, if you're worried by that page, don't worry about it, just carry on. Um, what you can do is press tab and then uh, press the right arrow and then return to get onto the finish button. Uh, uh, once you press the finish button and you wait a little while longer, um, you're going to get a big raspberry in the middle of your screen and a mouse pointer. If you've got your keyboard or mouse pointer, you ought to be able to move your mouse around, um, click on stuff, uh, have, a, have a play with that. If you mess it up, don't worry, just, you can just redo the SD card, so you can't do any harm. Um, and once we've got that all set up, uh, we can start writing a game. And uh, the, the first real episode of this is going to be the next episode, uh, where I take you through very, very slowly... A very, very simple game, which is going to make your Raspberry Pi into a games machine, and it's going to make you into a games programmer.